as the world condemns the abhorrent transatlantic African slave trade that occurred between the 16th and 19th centuries, the Barbary slave trade in North Africa gets little mention in comparison. Quite staggering when you consider that over 1 million Europeans were ruthlessly taken captive by Barbary pirates, also known as Corsairs, with their plight being as dismal and oppressive as those of African slaves, earning them the nickname White Slaves of Barbary. Keep watching to learn more about the ruthlessness of the Barbary slave trade. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. The Barbary Coast was the name given to the coastal regions of North Africa between the 16th and 19th centuries. These countries included Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria and Libya. Barbary derives from the word Berber which are the oldest known people to inhabit this part of the Maghreb. The bitter reality of slavery has been around for centuries. In fact, Human trafficking can be traced as far back as the acclaimed Code of Hammurabi from Babylon in the 18th century BC, revealing its impact on virtually every major culture and civilization spanning different religious backgrounds. This horrific practice has been inflicted upon countless individuals throughout history, either by their own people and those who enslaved them. Despite its widespread occurrence, the trade of Barbary slaves conducted by pirates or corsairs has not been given much attention. Starting around the 16th century, any individual daring to travel across the Mediterranean Sea risked being taken captive by corsairs and sold into slavery on the Barbary coast. One of the most notorious examples was the Republic of Beauregreg set up by the slave-trading corsairs at Salé, a port on the Atlantic coast with commanding position on the Beauregreg estuary. Many of the corsairs based there were Muslim refugees expelled by Spain in 1610 who took piracy as a way of exacting revenge on Christendom. They began by attacking European ships, capturing their crews, holding them in underground dungeons on Salé, then selling them at slave auctions to merchants and dealers across the Islamic world. But they soon extended their raids to include the, the Iberian Peninsula and parts of northern Europe, seizing men, women and children for sale as slaves. Known in England as the Sally Rovers, they became a common threat to fishing communities on the south coast. In 1626, Trinity House, a maritime guild, estimated that there were about 1,200 English captives at Salé, mostly taken in the English Channel. They didn't stop there however, moving north to the Irish Sea, and even more distant lands like the Netherlands and Iceland. In an insidious maneuver, they beached on unguarded shores and invaded villages under the veil of darkness in order to capture their victims. This tactic was used during a raid of Baltimore, Ireland in 1631. As a result, numerous Mediterranean coastal towns were abandoned by its inhabitants until the 19th century due to fear of being victimized again. On the morning of June 20, 1631, a menacing force descended upon the coastal village of Baltimore on Ireland's southwest coast. It was an attack by more than 200 Barbary Corsairs armed with muskets and tools to inflict terror. Iron bars and sticks lit ablaze. The raiders silently crept up to front doors around the shoreline of homes in Baltimore's main village before unleashing their horrifying wrath. At the sound of a signal, they swiftly invaded the dwellings and disturbed those who were sleeping in their beds. Men, women, and children alike, all 107 individuals, were hauled onto ships that set sail for Algiers on a lengthy trip full of dread. Upon landing in Algiers, the citizens were immediately brought to slave pens and exposed for sale wearing next to nothing while being fettered. The men were used mainly as labor forces, women served as concubines, and children were indoctrinated into Islam so that they could eventually become a part of the Ottoman army's enslaved soldiery. During the 13th and 14th centuries, Christian buccaneers hailing from Catalonia and Sicily held reign over the seas, posing an ever-looming danger to merchants. But it wasn't until the Ottoman Empire's expansion in the 15th century that Barbary Corsairs became a true peril for ships owned by Christians. By the 16th century, European pirates had brought their superior sailing and shipbuilding techniques to the Barbary coast, permitting corsairs to venture into the Atlantic Ocean. The effects of these Barbary raids reached their peak in the early to mid-17th century, changing history forever. The narrative of Barbary slaves as white Christian captives taken by Muslim corsairs is much too simplistic. In reality, the raiders were not preoccupied with race or religious beliefs when deciding who to abduct. Slaves in Barbary spanned all races, religions, and backgrounds, from black to white, Catholic to Protestant. No one was safe from the predatory corsairs. 
but these pirates were not just Muslim as many English privateers and Dutch captains also took advantage of the ever-shifting loyalties during a tumultuous era where alliances could be broken with little more than pen on paper. Historian Robert Davis had this to say, one of the things that both the public and many scholars have tended to take as given is that slavery was always racial in nature. But that is not true. In potentially incendiary comments, Davis suggests that the history of white slavery has been minimized or disregarded due to scholars' preference for framing Europeans as malevolent colonialists instead of also acknowledging them as victims during certain times in history. The future of those enslaved by the Barbary pirates was a bleak one. As they journeyed back to North Africa, many perished due to cruel conditions and lack of sustenance aboard ships. Those who managed to survive were taken to bustling slave markets and made to stand for hours as potential owners appraised them prior their auctioning off. Upon acquisition, slaves would be compelled to perform a multitude of duties. Men were often subjected to backbreaking tasks such as quarrying and construction labor, while women endured domestic chores or sexual exploitation. When the sun set, these unfortunate souls were incarcerated in banyos that often swelted due to overcrowding conditions. Towards the end of the 17th century, as European navies strengthened and began to combat pirate ships more vigorously, Corsair activity slowly began to die down. It wasn't until early in the 19th century that both America and some European countries made a determined effort to fight back against Barbary pirates. In the early 1800s, Algiers faced relentless bombardment from French, Spanish and American forces. After an Anglo-Dutch attack in 1816 on Algiers, Corsairs were forced to surrender certain rights, including ending the practice of enslaving Christians. Unfortunately for non-European slaves, however, their trading was still allowed to persist. Even after sporadic episodes, the British launched a raid on Algiers in 1824 which was ultimately followed by a French occupation of Algiers in 1830, officially placing it under colonial rule. Similarly, France invaded Tunis in 1881 and Tripoli returned to Ottoman control again in 1835 before being annexed into Italian territory during the Italo-Turkish War of 1911. The African slave trade came to an end at last when various European countries passed laws granting freedom from slavery for all people held captive along the Barbary coast.